Hello, everyone. My name is Yifei. I'm a PhD student at, from the KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. And today I'm going to talk about our work on high performance of decode generation through the MR Linux dialect and also microkernel. So here is the outline of the talk today. First, I'll talk about the motivation. Why do we need to focus on the FD application? And also some background of the algorithm of the FFT computation. Then it's the methodology, our implementation in the code generation pipeline. And finally, it's the, our insights we got from the current work and our future plans. So FFT, which is short for the fast fewer transform, is kind of uh, an important part for many applications in the high performance computing, such as for the in the signal processing, we can use the FFT to transform the signal between the frequency domain and also the time domain. Also in the numerical analysis, we can use FFT to perform the partial differential equations. And there are many successful FFT libraries available, uh, such as the FTW, Spiral, and also some HFT and also some FD library offered by the vendors such as from in Intel and uh, NVIDIA. So here's some brief introduction of the FFT algorithm. So FT is one of the fast algorithm to compute the discrete Fourier transform. And uh, on the top, here is the formula. It, it is a direct computation of a uh, discrete Fourier transform. It, it can be implemented as a matrix multiplication between the DFT matrix and the input vector. By performing the FFT algorithm, and shown here is the one of the most, uh, is the most popular Kuli Turkey FFT algorithm. It can decompose the bigger size DFT into some smaller size DFT, such as here, the bigger size DFT N, size N can be decomposed into smaller size DFTK and DFTM. And on the bottom, here is a matrix for formalism of the computation. We can see that the matrix is not dense, so we can take, take advantage of the sparse and structured pattern here to reduce the complexity from the ordo N squared to ordo N squared N. And here is an overview of our implementation. So one of the motivation we have to implement the, uh, the, 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 the computation in microkernels is that the current uh, complex ar ar arithmetic is not supported very well in the general purpose uh, MR and LVM cogeneration. So here is like uh, we implemented our FD specific operations in the Linux in the Linux that dialect using the OpDSL, and we use the Python binding as a front end to generate the MR code directly. And after we have the FD ops in the Linux dialect, we perform some uh, transformations and optimizations on the tensor ops, such as uh, uh, perform the formula rewriting, uh, as I showed before, to decompose the bigger sized FT, and also for for uh, for cash friendly reasons and other. And after we perform the high-level transformation, we can either map some of the targets to the microkernels we implemented, and the other part we went through the bufferization of the MR and then lower down to LVM. And at this point, we utilize the vectorizer in the LVM called SLP because the current uh, MR, the, the, the vector dialect, they don't support the complex values, and the current. Uh, design support the both JIT compilation mode and ahead of time compilation mode. In JIT mode, we can, uh, we can, we can, we can work, we can, we can call the library from Python and the input output as a Python library. And also in the AOT mode, now it's implemented as a C library. The input output can be C buffer. So here are the operators we implemented in the Linux dialect. Uh, Specific to the FFT computation, uh, we can see that they are. Uh, we can see that they correspond to the some of the four formulas I've shown shown before, and they are already fused. And yeah. after bufferization, they can map to certain uh, so, 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 so certain computations of the.
loop iterations. And one of them is shown here. Uh, here, the example is, is the quantic product of uh, matrix, normally DFT, and uh, identity, and then um, multiply with the input vector. And uh, we utilize the lineage of the SL language uh, to define the operator. We define the input and output space of the uh, input output of the tensor, and also we define the computation patterns and memory access patterns. But uh, currently, the problem is that the our specific patterns is not supported well in OpDSL. So by default, the, 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 the they can infer the iteration space automatically, but uh, it, it didn't work for our case. So we have a workaround, which is we introduce a redundant tensor to specify the iteration domain dimension to tell the compiler the loop we want. And uh, here are some of the uh, optimizations we apply on the Linux operations. Here the com computation pattern is the chronic product between identity matrix and the DFT matrix. And as shown here in the matrix for formalism, here are some kind of block parallelism. So the A corresponds to a DFT matrix and the implementation will be like a matrix vector multiplication between A and each DFT will correspond to a consecutive block of the input vector. So here we can apply the toweling to get a for loop and inside the for loop, the loop body is a matrix, it's a matrix vector multiplication between the DFT matrix and the input vector. So basically it's a smaller DFT we can decompose the bigger DFT to smaller DFT and in a cache-friendly way. And later on, we utilize the, and all, all these, we utilize the transform dialect in, available in MLR and finally map them to the macrokernel call. And the, here is some implementation details we implemented in our macrokernels. So one of them is the data layout of the complex numbers. The DFT, can operate on the complex numbers. And here is the uh, 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 example of the multiplication between two complex numbers. So basically, we need to get the uh, emanation and the real part out and perform multiplications and add subs on them. So if we have, so, and by default, the input and output complex arrays are stored in the interleaved data layout, such as here. The, uh, Imagination part and the real part are uh, stored one by one in the consecutively in the me 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 memory. But if you but if we have two complex arrays and we want to apply multiplications on them, and we we, we want to vectorize them, the current vectorizer of LVM will generate such memory access patterns. So first they will get the uh, real and imagination parts out like this, and then, we will, and then they will apply a series of the uh, arith arithmetic operations on them, and when we get the results, finally, they, they, they need to perform some data shuffling to store it back to the uh, interleaved memory layout. And this procedure will repeat every time when we uh, apply some arithmetic operation. So here, uh, one thing we can do is, is that for our all, all the inside our microkernel call, we maintain the data layout in the block interleaved way, so that uh, we don't need to apply data shuffling on the input and output. We, we only apply them in the beginning and uh, and and the end of the microkernel call. The other optimizations include uh, we applied. Uh, memory access optimization on the stride permute. Stride, stride permute is one of the operators that works for the uh, FD algorithm. They will apply strided, different strided and blocked memory access and, uh, on the input and output me me memory. And by default, the compiler will generate gather scatter for, for, for those memory access patterns. But uh, we uh, implemented several iterations of in register shuffle to traverse the memory and to, 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 to implement the block, blocked and stranded memory access. 
and uh, we have like 10 times speed up compared with the getter scatter on the memory access part. And also we apply loop and row to enable virtualization on some small size loop chip count to utilize the full length of the vector re re register. And, and this, this will require some extra data shuffle, which is not, cannot be done by uh, auto vectorizer in LVM now. Also we apply some software prefetching and pre-compute the constants. So there are also some parts which cannot uh, map to the microkernel, and we went through the MLR and the LVM code generation pipeline. Since the uh, MLR vector doesn't support complex values, we utilize the LVM vectorizer. And one of the optimization they can do is, is like I said before, they can uh, generate in, in red, red shuffle instead of gather scatter on the memory access pattern for the complex array. But uh, they only, in our experiment, they only works for the straighted two case. If we have a more complicated memory access pattern, they cannot generate the code we want. So to sum it up, our contribution is that we introduced uh, representation and transformation of FT in the Linage dialect. And also we, uh, the, the front end is in MR pattern binding. Uh, we applied a series of transformations in the Linux dialect, such as the formula writing to decomposition for the catch friendly and reduce the complexity. And finally, they will uh, map to a microkernel call. And inside the microkernel, we applied some optimizations for a more CMD friendly data layout and the memory access patterns. So currently, this is uh, in progress work, so we only have some initial results. We didn't compare with other FT light libraries, we only compared our microkernel implementation with the code generation without the microkernel, which went through the MLR and LVM vectorizer pipeline. We can see that uh, we have some speed up over different sizes, and for some sizes, the sizes is over 10. But there's still some gap. It's still uh, in progress work. So there is still some gap compared with other state-of-art FFT libraries. So, um, and also there are some optimizations. We, 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 the, the, there's some overhead we have found, but we haven't uh, optimized it yet, such as in the buffer allocation and also function call between the MLR and the C language. Uh, because the, the, the FFT can be called uh, by Python and be called by the C, and also the macro kernel are implemented in C language, then called by the MLR, so there are some overhead. And uh, also we can, uh, also one, one possible optimization that constant propagation, which currently doesn't work very well, because in the DFT matrix there are lots of ones and zeros, which haven't been optimized out yet. And also the current macro kernels utilizing the C++ intrinsics so for a better control of the register allocation and instruction scheduling, it's better to rewrite it with the assembly code. And uh, uh, also in a more general way, it's, it's like uh, for now it's like our work is to see the potential of certain complex arithmetic optimizations can have on the performance. So eventually we want to uh, introduce those uh, vectorization and the optimization patterns into MLR and make it automatically in the compiler. Yeah, that's my work. Do we have questions? Yeah. yeah. Hi, I was wondering if you have looked into why the MLIR uh, vectorization passes do not support complex numbers and whether it is something you might be able to add easily and use that. Uh, you mean add su vectorization support on the complex numbers? Yeah, I was wondering if you have looked into why that isn't supported. Uh, I would just, uh, I don't know the exact reason, but my observation is that the complex values are now not a uh, first class data type supporting the LVM, and also the MR vectorizer, they don't support the aggregated type. So here the complex numbers are basically like a struct of two floats or double numbers. And uh, for now, they, they don't support it. And I would say it's also, there are also some hardwares 
that can support complex arithmetic now. But uh, uh, again, the LVM that doesn't support the, 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 the complex values as the first type. So there will be some gap lowering the complex values down to the LVM, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. Can you go back to your results, please? How do you explain this uh, variability inside of your result between 64, 128, 256? You have a speed up that, is, that range from 5 to 20. Yeah, you, you mean how did I choose the sizes or? No, no. Why did you, did you have a look to the fact that the, the speed up is quite variable? Uh, I would say that the currently we didn't support, uh, so, so the microkernel is basically some small size of DFT. So currently we didn't support many sizes of small DFTs, we only support several of them. So for some sizes of the FT, such as for, especially for the bigger ones, they might not have the most efficiently decomposition of, of, of the microkernels. Okay. Other question? Okay, thank you, speakers. The next session will be lightning talk at 2.15. Uh, see you then. <laughs>